everyone. I am here at the Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Tonight's um, Bible study is by Grace Fox. Let's go ahead and read the last poem in this book so we can get it out of the way. It's by Grace E. Easley, and it's called Winter White. Softly, silently, the snowflakes fall, and flannel-posted fences raise their heads along the winding miles of in-rain shrubs, down roadways lined with crystal flower beds. The intricate design of frosted lakes gleams dully neath a matted sky of gray. Pale pointed fingers of the north wind tear the frozen branches roughly from its way. Like a scene within a water globe, the smallest hand need only shape the sea. The dazzling swirl that breathlessly descends to shape the world in fragile mystery. So the world appears to me tonight, dressed in a flowing gown of emring white. All right. And that was her poem. I prefer rhyming poems. I like them the best. Um, okay. So, tonight we're in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. And the Bible verse that goes along with Grace's devotion is Philippians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, which says, I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteousness, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. And now we're going to go to the Bible, to Philippians chapter 1, and read it. Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, for whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains, but what does it matter? The important thing is that 
in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice, yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out to my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you will stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. I love what Paul said up here. Where is it at? Where he's saying, I can't exactly find it, where he's saying, what does it matter whether they're doing it for selfish ambition to try to hurt me or whether they're doing it out of love? They're doing it out of love if they're preaching Christ out of love or they're doing it if they're preaching Christ just to hurt me. Christ is still being preached. And that's the main thing. He's still being preached. That's the main thing. Okay, so let's see what Grace has to say about this. She says, Maturing in my relationship with Jesus. Has helped me identify thoughts I've had regarding my faith. For instance, take the matter of living a pure and blameless life. I believe it mattered solely because God accepted it. Failing to meet his expectations would either disappoint or anger him. My attitudes and behaviors would either receive his reward or result in consequences. End of story. Now I understand things differently. The Apostle Paul's prayer for the believers in Philippi helps me see that living a blameless life matters, but for reasons other than avoiding punishment. It matters because I represent Jesus to a watching world. Representing Jesus places a responsibility on me to behave with integrity. Unbelievers expect that for me, and rightfully so, but sometimes I fall short. My old nature wrestles with the new and wins. When that happens, it's my responsibility to try to get things right. My behavior can either make Jesus attractive to those who don't know him, or it can turn them away. Thankfully, he's all about helping me succeed. As I surrender my will to him, he transforms me through the power of his spirit living in me. I become more like him, and my life creates a curiosity 
in others to know the one who changes me and gives me hope. Your homework is to ask Jesus to make your life like salt, creating a thirst in others for the living water. Let someone see Jesus in you today and every day. That's the goal. Whether it's over the phone, whether it's in a letter, whether it's in person. Our next Bible study will be in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 19. So, of course, I'll go get that set up. But let's do our animal devotion. This one is by Kathy Carlton Willis. And the Bible verse is Mark 6, 31. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. And this story is called Millie, the Service Hero. I've been spending time with a new friend, Millie, the Service Doll, but I've dubbed her Service Hero, my own version of a cape defender with dual personalities. When Millie is on duty, she is able to sit for long periods of times, brace herself to support her handler's weight, and ignore distractions. Well, they're still working on that. Millie's owner, Brenda, started training Millie when the pup was just six weeks old. They started with relationship building and crate training. After Millie turned three months old, Brenda became her handler, and that was the beginning of the service training. Millie's best skill is picking up items so Brenda doesn't have to bend over. She retrieves keys and leash on command. She scoops up anything her handler needs, including receipts. But Millie is an everyday dog too. She loves to play fetch and she soaks up all the belly rubs we give her when she's on duty. She has learned the command make friends and naps with the best of them. I've learned from Millie that while it's great for me to serve others and attempt amazing things, I'm not going to get it 100% right all the time, and I need to rest once in a while. I'm okay with that. I need to put my to-do list off duty every so often and focus on making friends and self-care, just as Superman is also Clark Kent and service hero Millie is also playmate Millie. I can take off my cape and be simply Kathy. Father, I trust you to handle my business for me so I know when it's time to work and when it's time to play or rest. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow night with another Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless. Good night.